Rogue, founder of Yahoo Tech, and I'm happy to present today an exclusive interview with John Ledger, the CEO of T-Mobile. T-Mobile may have less than a quarter of the subscribers of Verizon and AT&T, but that underdog status has allowed this company to be incredibly aggressive. T-Mobile has been systematically eliminating the things that people hate about their cell phone carriers. Let me see if I've got this straight. First, they eliminated the two-year contract requirements, made internet and text messaging overseas free, text messaging on airplanes is free, listening to streaming music doesn't account, doesn't count against your data allotment, T-Mobile doesn't charge anything for tethering to your laptop. Last week, they introduced the nation's only family unlimited data plan. And this morning, at this moment, John, you introduced yet another change at to T-Mobile's policies. Why don't you tell the folks at home? Yeah, good morning, David. Listen, I'm, I'm having a hard time. They've seat belted me into this chair. <laughs> I don't do uncarrier moves sitting down, but for you, I'm going to try. <laughs> you know, uncarrier move time is my favorite time of all, because just to remind you, this is a philosophical, principle-based attack on changing a stupid, broken, arrogant industry. And I made this statement two years ago, and everything you've outlined, these are structural changes. They're not programs. They're permanent. And today is on Carrier 8. And I'll give you the tagline, and then I'll tell you why it is arguably the biggest thing we've ever done since on Carrier 1. And it's called Data Stash. And the tagline is, it's your data. What you don't use, you won't lose. And in effect, you can think of it as data rollover. And the magnitude of this issue, David, is unbelievable. This game is rigged by the big guys. They get you multiple ways. And let me just give you some stats that'll blow your mind. There are 231 million postpaid customers in the wireless industry. Which postpaid means... being they're not prepaid, is you have a bill. You know, you're okay. what's called the coveted customers in the industry. 231 million. Of those, there are 110 million that either have feature phones, so not a smartphone, okay. so you don't really care about data, or you have an unlimited plan, thanks mostly to us and to Sprint who offer those plans. That leaves 120 million what I call data guessers. 90% of the people say they have no idea how much data they need. 50% say they don't know how much they use. Of that 120 million, 13 million pay penalties. You know, as soon as you start using, you get those warning, warning, right, warning. Right, you get texts that say yeah. you have 50% left. $1.5 billion last year went to penalties. So what happens? I, I know you can't swear on this station, but it scares the shit out of people. They are petrified. So what do they do? They buy up. Okay, here's the gig. People buy on average four to five gigabits worth of data. Okay, here's the amazing part. At the end of the month, on average, they have three gigs unused okay three gigs unused average cost of a data gigabit is almost twelve dollars gigabyte right gigabyte okay <laughs> well done my David friend Pogue, yeah, who 12 <laughs> so, Correcting John so twelve dollars okay yeah. that's about forty dollars a month per person four hundred and eighty a year hundred million people round numbers fifty billion dollars because guess what at the end of the month carriers take it off the table you go to a restaurant, you don't eat your food fast enough. They take it. You go to a gas station, you fill your car at the end of the month, you don't use the gas, they take it. What we're now allowing you to do is roll it over and you get a data stash. And what you can do, you can put it in the bank. Here come the props. Okay. Last piece. You know what we're going to do to start this off? We're going to give every single qualifying customer, every new customer, 10 gigs free. We're going to put 10 gigs data stash right in the bank to get you going. And I think this is going to be something that's really going to shake up the industry. Yeah, because you guys, after all, have been doing it too, right? You've been giving people limited buckets. Oh, contraire, mon frere. <laughs> uh, it, you know, we stopped overages. That's not part of our plan. Not only did we stop it in Simple Choice Plan, but what we also did is April of this year, in anything legacy-based, I announced that all overages are done. And I actually did a change.org petition asking all the carriers to join in and stop this horrific practice of overages. It's just a silly game. And it's also one of those things, David, that what we're in effect asking carriers to do is to eliminate a, a nonsensical charge that is to them profit, well, pure it's, profit. Wait a minute, but, but you, that's 
publicity, right? Because Verizon and AT are not going to change when they're making $1.5 billion in penalties. Well, here's, That's money. here's the fun. How about you mentioned international data roaming? 95 points of gross margin. We give that to our customers for free. And, and I think what's, what's blowing people's minds is the only thing stopping from Verizon or AT&T of getting rid of that $1.5 you know, billion dollars is their greed and their business structure and the fact that, remember, what we are is we're the uncarrier. <laughs> We are undoing the things that they do. What in their cost structure supports that one and a half billion dollars worth of charges? Well, but here's what I want to ask you, though: all that money that so so, so all these uncarrier moves that you're making, yep. essentially boil down to saving your subscribers' money. You're, you're you're taking money out of your profits and giving them back to the consumers. Right. Aren't those other carriers using that money to buy Spectrum and build towers and right. do important things? And several things. First of all. Um, we're the fastest growing wireless company in the United States. We have added 38 million gross ads in the last six quarters. Gross ads? Gross additions. Customers coming in, signing up for service. As opposed to net ads, where you have some leaving, some going. Oh, I see. So we've, we've had 10 million net additions in six quarters. And just this year, we'll add over 8 million customers. So it's working. So okay? how many customers do you have right now? We have 53 and a half million as of the end of last quarter. And obviously, at the end of this quarter, we'll have uh, even more. Mm -hmm. So we're growing significantly quickly. Okay. Now, as you say, what the, what the big guys are doing is they're trying to fight back. And, and think about what's happened in the last few quarters. Now, Q3, by the way, we, were, we added 2.4 million customers. We added more phone nets than all of them combined. Okay, so the fight started. And, and there's a lot of discussion about how aggressive the industry fight started. Well, how do they fight? One guy says, I'm going to double your data bucket. And the other guy says, no, I'm going to double your double. And then the other guy says, yeah, but I'll give you money to come to me instead of him. The poor customers are sitting over here. They don't, they, if any of them look at them, do you know where this data stash came from? I, I do Twitter every day, as I know you do. I sit there incessantly, and people hate me for it. 40,000 tweets were about data rollover. Individual people tweeting, hey, I know what I want, John. Let me save the data that I don't use. Oh, so this isn't your idea. This no, is... no, I don't have any ideas. I'm not really that smart. <laughs> uh, everything we do, this is the other trick between us and, you know, Mo, Larry, and Curly. <laughs> Everything we do comes not just from customer surveys. It comes from individual customers writing in. So data stash is not only if you buy data, it's yours. Roll it over. Take the 10 gig we give you for free. Can you imagine? Think about what's happened in the industry now. So Mo, Larry, and Curly are telling each other, hey, I'm going to double your double bucket size. You can have 60 gigs of data for your family. Are they going to let them roll that over? Can you imagine? No. Imagine how they need a big bank. Right. And so, you know, it, second piece is, I always said in the Uncarrier moves, you went through them, Uncarrier one through seven, and I, the stats will blow your mind. We have over 85% of our customers on Simple Choice now that was Uncarrier one. So it's two years migration. We have over 9 million people who signed up for Jump, Anytime Upgrade. International roaming utilization has gone up 35-fold. Music streaming, 70 million songs a day are streamed for free. Now, if you're waking up and you're, you know, the Three Stooges right now, in order to do this, you also have to abolish overages. You got to do both. But okay, so but here's what I don't get. You, as you say, you didn't have, you weren't charging overages like before this morning. Yep. If you reach the end of your five gigs this month, you would just slow my internet down. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, it's first of all, we have unlimited data, right? So you can use data as much as you want. Then you buy a high-speed bucket. So right. you buy a five gigabit high-speed bucket. Gigabyte. And at the <laughs> It's don't, don't worry, this will all be edited out. You'll be made to look good. And, and at, the, uh, at the end of that, we will slow your speeds down to 2G or allow you to keep buying. Right. But as I'm outlining here, you know, the bigger question has really been, because of what people are trained, is are they using that? Right. Now, in our case also, you know, you can buy unlimited. And then, you know, which is getting to be a big percentage of ours. So what we've done is we've protected people first 
we offer unlimited and you say we've got a family plan two lines a uh, hundred dollars unlimited forty dollars each edition and then we have no overages and then what we're doing in the middle for those that are in the growth phase and trying to learn what they need is don't worry you don't use you you don't lose okay so the all right, so what percent are on Unlimited right now in T-Mobile? I, I think about, uh, for us, I'm not sure the latest number. Call it 20, you know, 20 to 25. Oh, so most people are still doing oh, yeah, monthly no, no. buckets of data. Yeah, listen, it's a, it's a migration process. Remember, like, think about the industry, as I just said. There's still a huge amount of people that have feature phones. And then they come into smartphones, and they experiment with data, and they're moving through the process. And a lot of us are, are you know, tempting them to learn how to use data, but it's a guessing game. And, and as, as I outlined, the way it's run right now, it's a scare tactic guessing game. Don't, you know, how do you, what other industry do you have to decide ahead of time <laughs> how much you need? And then you're penalized either way. Well, the, the other ridiculous thing that I've been pointing out for 10 years is that you don't know what t five gigabytes means. I, how much of that is used up when I open yeah. this web page, when I watch this video? What is that going to cost? Right. You have no idea. Well, and you know, see, in your case, since you've been a longtime porn user, you know that video is a, you know, it's, it, it really eats up. But, you know, you're 100% right. Listen, what we're also doing is think about this is not just smartphones. This is tablets. People are just learning how to be mobile with multiple products and try and see what they do. And we, we've done everything we can in the Uncarry moves to make it easy and to make it simple. The, but one of the big principles about T-Mobile is um, simplicity and transparency. Now you can argue with any piece of our plan um, and you can like it or not like it, but it's really easy to understand. We have very simple pricing. We, you, phones are not subsidized. We have an equipment installment plan. It's all painfully simple. The other guys, it, it's still, now by the way, on this, they may reply, but it'll be trickery. It'll be asterisks, you know, it'll be some game. And lastly, I would say, you know, the question you probably asked me next is are they gonna reply? I hope so, because remember on uncarrier moves, my goal is to change the industry to this. So the ad question, John, when will you stop paying ETFs for the termination of contracts? That's early termination fees. And I say, no, it, it's, it's not that it's permanent, but it'll stop the day there's not a single contract on earth. Right? That's when it is. Oh, okay, so you're, right. so you're going to stop paying people switching fees the day there are no more contracts. That's right. Oh, okay. It's a structural move. All right, now we, we have a question from the elephant in the room, John. Okay. And that is, every time I tell people or write about some of these moves, and I'm a huge consumer advocate, um, I'm a huge fan of these moves, I think data rollover is... Data stash. Da it's data rollover. Data stash. You, you know, all right, data stash. Um, it's a fantastic idea. It is screamingly obvious. We've paid for that data. Why should we have to start the clock every month new? So that's great. Um, but when I tell people this, I hear, yeah, but, you know, T-Mobile coverage, you know, so... Beautiful. Thank you. No, that's supposed it, to make no, you squirm. Wrong again. This is this is this is the best part of the whole uh, thing. Isn't T-Mobile like do mainly you know, big cities? Uh, you, know? you know, there's a there's a part of the announcements we're making today, but I couldn't cram. You know, this is such a fancy, you know, short use of time thing that I, I didn't want to cram you up too much. We're making announcements as we do. If you've noticed, every time I come out with a quarterly earnings announcement or with an uncarrier move, I always have a second topic an update on our network. Uh, and my network team is the finest in the world. 260 million pops of LTE as of today. And pops, by the way, that's pops. up uh, percent of population, or it's people. Oh, okay, Two, 260 million people. It's all about the pops. You know, <laughs> I, I'd sing that for you, but 260 million. By the way, that's up from two years ago where we had, are you ready? Zero. Uh, what? LTE, zero, two years ago. So you have 260 million 260 people million. who can get 4G LTE 4G data LTE. speeds. Interesting. And you had no fun. LTE. We had none. We had none. When we had no iPhone. You remember all those times? Yes. That's the, that's the person on the street when you say, what do you think about T-Mobile? And it's some schmo that doesn't think we had the iPhone and our network blows. That, that, those days are gone. So 260 million, by the way, that's up 10 million from a month and a half ago. That's the pace at which we're moving. More importantly, we're here in New York. We're in the Gotham City. Uh, we just turned on 
wideband LTE. So what happens with LTE is a lot of the players, LTE is not LTE. Some people have five by five speeds. Which means? Right? It means two channels, five, five channel, right? And then you move up and up and up, okay? When you get to 15 by 15, so think three, three lanes of five, it becomes wideband. Okay. We were 10 by 10, uh, so what we have in New York the speeds before today could be expected to be 20 to 25 megs of speed. Mm -hmm. It doubles when it goes to wideband, which is, you know, 40 to 50 speeds with a theoretical, not a good word, real world speed possibility in New York of 100 megs. Best sighting so far, 106. Now, that is, wait till you see this. Okay, so speeds. We are the fastest 4G LTE network in the U.S. Nobody's arguing. In fact, AT&T even created a new word. We're the strongest. The F is that. I'm not going to use the F word today, but if I could, I would stick that right in there. The F does that mean, David? <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so strongest. Now, breadth. Okay, so what we're also doing is we're taking our 1900 band and we're deploying 4G LTE on what used to be 2G. So people used to see edge and 2G. Uh -huh. By mid next year, all of that will be 4G. And then we bought the 700 band, which is the first low band spectrum that we have. And we have 190 million pops that we're building out. So what's happening is week by week, we've announced by the end of 15, we will cover 300 million pops. It's getting to the point where we're not only on par, we have a superior network advantage. So take that and then stick all this stuff in. If I was, if I was A and B, I'd be <laughs> myself you mean right now. Verizon yeah, and AT&T. The big guys that lost $40 billion with the market cap last week. All right, well, but then explain this to me. I think we have some graphics here of coverage maps, okay? Uh -huh. So this is a representation of the data map that you put out that you, d that you depict, and then we have another map that shows Verizon's depiction on the right there of your data footprint. So on the left is what you say, on the right is what Verizon said. They're nothing alike. So what is oh, the truth in oh, there? Oh, you mean the one on the right that the National Advertising Board told them they can't use anymore? But it's on their website right now. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Good lawyers, get them. <laughs> It, it's come on, it's a crock. And, and in fact, what Verizon said is, yeah, those are slightly outdated maps. We haven't updated them yet. You know, and I think one of the things that it also does is this industry, in the same way that I just told you, depending on you know what you have five by five up to wideband on LTE, it's all LTE 4G, but it's not. There is HSPA plus. I won't get too technical, but there yeah, is we're, we're, there are differentiated speeds of 4G. Okay. And to a certain extent, in the beginning, I think technically Verizon was saying, "Hey, that's not 4G." You know, 4G is defined as this. So it's trickery. It's trickery. Um, Ookla. Do you use Ookla? I do it. Do you know what it is? No. It's an app. Okay. It's the coolest app in the world. Okay. And you just open it and you push and it does speed tests. Oh, okay. Okay. So what we do is we have the Ookla results of all the carriers. Every person who, and you know what's fun thing about an Ookla test? A human being has to be somewhere they normally go to push that button to check the speed. We are the fastest nationwide network of those speed tests across everybody. As compared to some of the surveys that the others do, where machines go around and they can stop in a cow field, you know, where nobody is and do a speed test, and then when you average all of that, since we have 260 million pops and they have so far, 330. That's the only time you get a discrepancy. All right, well, uh, well s suppose all these efforts are successful, right? And you, at, at this rate, you- More successful, More yeah. successful. At yeah. this rate, you say you are, in essence, sucking subscribers from the big boys, okay? So what if you become a big boy? Remember when the iPhone came out and it sank AT&T's network yep. because so many people on this aging infrastructure aren't you going I mean, it's yeah. great while you're small, but what about when you have yeah, millions of- See, they weren't ready and they didn't care. You know, I, I, I take great pleasure in their change in behavior. The, seriously, uh, the investment that's taking place by those guys, those guys in their networks is because they're chasing our speeds. If we weren't there to keep them honest, if, you weren't, if you're a customer of Verizon, if you didn't go in and say, hey, 
I just did a test drive. You know that is. You know, one of our Uncarry moves is we give free devices for seven-day tests. You can take it home. Stop all the bullshit with the commercials. Take a phone home and try T-Mobile. And you go in and you say, what the hell is this? I, I'm testing T-Mobile. They're five times faster than you, you schmuck. <laughs> and so what they're doing is they're trying to change their behavior. We build our network ahead. So we know we have twice as much capability or capacity on our network per subscriber as they do. So we got a long way to go. But just so you'll know, the more successful piece, in the two years that I've been playing this game and in the six quarters we've been doing on carry moves, we've gone from 11% market share to 17% which is huge. I mean, it's a 50% plus increase, but it's 17. It's not 25, right? So what are these guys going to do? Our share of gross ads, like the percentage of people that come in, it's gone from 19 to 30. All right, so more people. And the two things that I'm proudest of is right now, if you survey all people in the industry, everybody, AT&T, Verizon, those you know, those few people that have Sprint, you interview them all, <laughs> then by a factor of 20% greater than number two, if you answer the question, who's changing the wireless industry for the better? 25% of all customers, that's the other guy's customers too, say it's T-Mobile, and that's 20% more than the number two guy. Right. Which means there's a lot of people over there waiting to move. <laughs> okay. This is a, David, this is a big deal. All right, so 50 billion. You you enjoy antagonizing Verizon and at and right? I mean, those guys don't like you. No, right? they hate me. Okay. No, no, you so, don't want to walk across the street. But aren't me. there times when you guys need to band together, like going to the FCC to ask for some attention or something where, where you're going to regret making you know, them furious at you? You know what? I, it, it, this, band, what's band together mean? I mean, come on, I'm the CEO of T-Mobile, right? I mean, this is, my, my employee's <laughs> average age is 28. My customers are cool and young and they're coming and, you know, we're taking over. Randall Stevenson is the chairman of the business round table. That's like a bunch of guys with those microphones where you politely say shit to each other and you cut back room deal. I'm not playing that game. I, I'm, I'm sure from a Washington standpoint that what I'm doing to the industry is good. By the way, I... You know, I feel pretty good about how things are going. You don't hear me yelping and warning. And, and by the way, in the last couple of days, most analysts have raised my stock price. I feel pretty good. And I feel pretty good that Washington, left to their own devices, if something irrational happens by Mo and Larry to stop me, will be supported. Because it's great for the American consumer. So, so you're saying the answer is no, there aren't times that you regret Ticking them oh, off. Oh, no. Have, listen, if you've got anything good that I can use to tick them off, I'll tick the f off right now. <laughs> oh no, God. because remember, um, I'm not doing any. It's not personal. I detest the industry they set up. All these things that I'm changing, it's, it's a structural way that they've designed the industry to run it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's illogical. You know how every uncarrier move that we change, like as you just said, data stash, it's intuitive. Doesn't matter. The, f the funnest part strategically, as well as the thing that should tip you off, is every move that we do, it's right there. It's not that complicated. It's simple, it's intuitively obvious, and customers, until it's pointed out to them, they think, Maybe it wasn't able to be done. Otherwise, why wouldn't those other guys do it? Well, why don't they? Yeah. I mean, I don't. Yeah, they yes. have the money. They don't care. I, I, here's why: they can't, and they won't. Okay, right. it's two easy answers. Right. The can't is, you know, and we could use analogies to the TV industry when you knew certain media-paid advertising models were dead, and you should just immediately cannibalize your own base and move on. Books have been written about this strategically for years. You can't. What group can wake up and say, okay, that $20 billion revenue stream, well, that's dead, so let's just push that off and give that away for free. They can't. Secondly is, a lot of these things that they set up, they, they, this is an industry in the beginning during a time of scarcity where you got licenses, you put up towers, and you took orders because everybody wanted the phones. So a telecom business was a group of greedy people saying, okay, here, here, here's what the cost is. And it got structured in a way, think about right now. It's holiday time. Verizon, 
I love you. I'm going to give you $300 to come to me. Not because you want to come to me. I'm bribing you. And the second you get here, I'm going to lock you in. And on January 10th, you're going to be pissed that you're here. That's still what they're doing. It shouldn't be that way. All right. So I, and really quickly, I have one last question. Then we're going to take questions from Twitter. So what we haven't said is that the data rollover. Uh, data the, stash. Yeah. <laughs> is all, the minutes, the minutes, the, the megabytes that you've saved are only good for a year, right? Yeah. So if, if this is so great and this is such a great idea, why, why limit it to a year? Well, they roll, right? So it's a rolling. But why can't a, they roll forever? Uh, that's a good question. I'll <laughs> take that under advice. No, Nail. I mean, listen, it's, so there's several things. Remember, let's go through them. First of all, a gift. Do you know where I got the idea for the gift, by the way? If you go to Sprint store right now, there's a big sign in the window that says, give the gift of data. And I thought, <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> We're going to give a gift of data. 10 gigabits in the bank, okay, and you're, and you're going to use that. Now, once you use that up and use your high-speed plan, you'll start to roll over. You know, at some point, for accounting purposes and for how you, you know, understand the cost of this, also to make it real, you know, camp, it's sort of like gift cards. You know, at some point, you know, you've got to have some way to account for them. So, in effect, each one has a 12-month clock. So, all right. So, and to be clear, you're saying that my January unused minutes will expire January of next year, but my February ones will still be good till February. It's, it's, not, it's not everything starts at zero no, no, on January 1st. No. Well, the, um, the, the, the data stash, I mean, the, the first gift, right. that, that gift will expire at the end of 15. So, yeah, we're doing right. a, this is a one-time. The structural move is the okay. data stash. Great. Are you going right. to do it, by the way? Um, I still can't get a oh, signal see, in my home, although okay. I can do the Wi-Fi calling. That's cool. Personal cell spot. Yeah, Did you try it? That's very cool. Yeah, no, it works great. My assistant okay. got T-Mobile, and, and she can make calls over Wi-Fi you know, in my you home. told me the same <laughs> last time, and I've upgraded your whole neighborhood. It's like the best. <laughs> okay, so in. now we have some questions <laughs> from... You live in a cow field. From, <laughs> from Twitter. Move to the city. Uh, John, are you going to put in more service towers outside of major cities? You know, uh, the answer is yes, but the answer isn't about towers. I get this. I love Twitter. Everybody says they think that what you need is a tower next to their house in order to get. And I actually have people telling me, you can use my yard. Put a tower here. <laughs> the, the issue for us is more the deployment of low band spectrum. And, you know, without getting too technical, the, you know, low band spectrum has a longer propagation. So it goes further. Mm -hmm. So towers can extend further into rural areas. So this low band spectrum, the 700 block that we're working on, and then the low band auctions, that'll be you know, extremely important. Now, secondly, is where we previously have had 2G or edge speeds, we're migrating that to 4G. So that'll take care of most. So as we get to 300 million pops, we're gonna be in most of the places. We will have some new towers, but that's not really the, you know, that's not really the total answer. Interesting. And whoever that is can, send me a note, give me their zip code. Uh, I take all my own personal, you know, Twitter. And if somebody gets to me and tells me where they are or where they've got an issue, I'll personally get back to them and tell them whether we can have service. How do you Including do anything else? your neighborhood. <laughs> all right, is, I'll watch for that. Okay, David's from... neighbors, by the way. If you live near David, coverage is smoking. <laughs> smoking. <laughs> You know? <laughs> They're going to put one on my roof. Um, okay, I switched from Verizon. Mostly good. Very unhappy with the customer service. Mostly outsourced. Any plans to improve this? That's actually not true. Um, you know, we do have some outsourced service, but we have been, let's say at one point we were 50-50 uh, with some onshore, offshore, but we have about 20,000 customer care reps in cities around the United States. Volumes, as you can imagine, been going through the roof, and we have been moving offshore to onshore. And certainly, you know, what I'm trying to do is as productivity is improved, you know, keep the jobs here, move them up. And actually last court, last period, our team was named for the first time in a while JDP number one in customer service. So we've got issues uh, that we work on. One thing I also challenge everybody on Twitter on is me and my whole team, email and Twitter, we take service calls directly and we work them with our care organization. So I, I strongly believe we have a differentiated customer care because my company knows that what I do and what we do is take care of not big enterprises, individual customers. Uh, so if there's an issue, I'd, I'd love to hear it, but I'm, I'm pretty proud of our customer service team. Wow, 
His Twitter address is at John Ledger. Yep. All right, one more. Uh, John, are you going to bring BlackBerry back to Timo? Yeah, that's, um, listen, BlackBerry is an institution. It's something that, um, you know, a lot of our customers want. And I'm, I'm open to the idea of finding a way that a customer that wants T-Mobile and BlackBerry can do that. But that, it, that requires a little cooperation from BlackBerry. Uh, you know, but for my customers, uh, if there's a way to do that, I'd love to. All right, cool. Well, John, today you've introduced for the first time Data rollover. <laughs> Data stash. <laughs> and uh, I think it's great. So for the 75% of T-Mobile customers who are still paying by the bucket by the month, this is going to be a great Christmas indeed. Thank you for everything you're doing to rattle the industry and uh, keep giving them hell. And thank you for this opportunity, David. And to everybody, uh, come and get it. Especially <laughs> if you're with the bad guys. We're waiting for you. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm David Pogue. It's been great to have you, John. Thanks for joining thank us. You. And thank you all for joining us today.